The voltage across the resistor should decay, like we saw in the test, right? 12 times e to the minus TRC. Voltage across, across the capacitor should uh, charge, should, uh, get, uh, should increase as a function of time. So what's happening to the voltage as a function of time across the capacitor? Changing. When the voltage is changing, what's happening to the electric field across the capacitor? When the voltage is changing, what's happening to the electric field? It's also changing. If the electric field changes, what do you create inside of the capacitor? Current. No, I mean, sorry. When, you, when the E field is changing across the capacitor, right? When you go like this, the voltage is, uh, cha uh, is changing, right? As a matter of fact, it's going to charge up like this. The current is going to come, and the uh, charge is going to build on this side. The E field is going to go this way, right? So as charge builds up on the left side and negative charge gets induced on the right side, electric field start being, starts getting introduced in that capacitor. As the voltage increases over time, the electric field gets stronger. And as, if the E field changes as a function of time, what does it create? inside of the capacitor. A B field. According to the right hand rule, this will act like current. Even though it's not current, it will act like current and you could use the right hand rule. Put your thumb in the direction of the E field, circle your fingers around it, so it's going to create a B field inside of the capacitor like this. So the capacitor will look like this. The capacitor will act as if it will act as if there's a current flowing through it, which is the displacement current, and it will create a B field around it. It'll be stronger near the center, and then over here. So imagine as if there is current flowing through there. Okay, let's calculate the the, the displacement current created by that and the magnet the magnetic field. The displacement current created by that is just this part. Right, that just that part is the displacement current. OK, so this is d by dt. So you go through the process again. Integral e dotted into dA. We're going to be doing a s similar thing in, on Wednesday. But in chapter 31, we're going to be doing integral b dotted into dA the, for Faraday's law. This one is e dotted into dA. So again, it becomes ea. And the A comes out of the integral because the area is not changing. So uh, the E dt. And again, how is the E connected to the V? Well, we've done this before again, right? Uh, e is uh, uh, V over the, the, the length of the capacitor, right? Which in this case, we usually call D the distance between the plates. The distance between the plates acts like the length of the capacitor because it's like the, the length of the resistor. So E is, um, e is uh, V over D, right? E is the V over the D, and the D came out of the integral. And then the dv dt, you can take the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor, right? So take the derivative of that. What's dv dt? 12 times uh, the derivative of this is going to be uh, uh, 1 over rc, right?
So 12 over RC, that is the derivative. 12 over RC, e to the minus 2 over RC. Oh, so therefore, even the displacement current across the capacitor is going to be decaying as a function of time. Initially, the displacement current is going to be very high. Then it's going to decay. As t goes to infinity, the displacement current is going to be 0. Well, let's calculate what this, what this part is. Is it big, small, or what? Um, Actually, this is something that we know. What is the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? Back to chapter 26. What's the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? It is A E0 over D. Oh, so things are falling into place over here. You know, something's cooking. So this part came out to be the C of the capacitor. And then that C cancels that C. Oh my goodness. You have basically 12 over R e to the minus T over RC. So what happened is, besides the regular current, there's a displacement current going through the capacitor. And its magnitude is pretty noticeable. It's not that small as in the case of the wire. Uh, what's the resistance in this case? Well, if the resistance is big, kilo ohms, it's going to be small. Okay? Let's say the resistance was not that big. Let's say it was just simply 10 ohms. So the displacement current. the actual actual current going through the resistor. Well, the actual current is simply the voltage across the resistor divided by its resistance. So the ammeter is not going to be able to tell the difference between the two. The actual current in the circuit and the displacement current in the circuit are exactly the same. So the rest of the circuit has a regular current going through it. The capacitor doesn't have any current going through it, but because the E field is changing as a function of time, it acts as there is a, dis a displacement current equal to the actual current in the circuit. So ID equals I. So this is a wonderful, wonderful thing that came out here. So the capacitor acts as if there is current flowing through it. Okay, and then finally, what's the magnetic field created by that displacement current? Then you can say the magnetic field created by that displacement current is B dot DL is mu zero ID, right? So it will be b times 2 pi r, and then id will be 1.2 e to the minus t over rc. So just divide it by 4 pi. This will be 2 times 10 to the minus 7 over r times Uh, remember, this is always 4 pi. So divide that by this, you get 2. 2 times 1.2 is 2.4. So the magnetic field in the capacitor also decays as a function of time. Initially, this is what it's equal to. Notice it's pretty, this one is much bigger than the regular wire, right? So it's much bigger. And then as a function, as t goes to infinity, the magnetic field decays as a function of uh, time. So it's uh, like this.